YouTube world. Welcome back to my channel. Today I will be trying out some new contour tricks that I've learned in watching other YouTubers, specifically Harouche. She's one of my favorite YouTubers. If you don't know who she is, do a Google search. I'm not here to teach you everything. We did have a few interruptions, just so you're aware. It's a little choppy, but I promise you it all turns out in the end. You see the end look. This is supposed to be a little Christmassy red and green. It kind of turned into like a pretty little mermaid eye look. And honestly, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I think it looks really pretty. It's super wearable. I tend to stay away from color. If you've watched my videos in the past, I usually do a neutral eye look, but I feel really inspired by the holiday season today so I was like why not do a cute little Christmassy look so if that sounds like something you're interested in please keep on watching oh and while you're here please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up I would really appreciate it love you so Let's get into it. We're gonna try out some new techniques today and possibly some new tools, some new products, and I'm just feeling good, feeling great. Okay, of course we have to start with primer. I'm gonna use the Matte Putty Primer this morning and just apply that all over my face. I like to use my fingers for primer just so I can kind of, you know, get a feel of how my skin is looking today, get a feel of like what areas I need to concentrate on as far as like dryness or oiliness. Seems like today it's doing pretty good. When I do my skincare routine, I usually apply the CauseRx Galactomyces and usually some vitamin E oil or some hyaluronic acid. It kind of varies. I don't like to stick to one skincare routine too much because I feel like my skin kind of acclimates to it and it gets used to those products. So I like to switch it up, keep my skin on my toes or skin on the toes keep the toes on my skin. Anyways, so yesterday I tried out a fun little concoction where I mixed my concealer with some of this pigment that I have that I kind of I've used in a bunch of other videos. It's not a like brand name thing. It's literally a, a product from China that I'm pretty sure was bought off of Amazon, but I used it for face painting back in the day when I would do kids face paint and it's really oily consistency. It doesn't dry down like paint. It kind of keeps its its oiliness. So I used a little bit of the yellow ochre and combined it with my concealer, which is just Makeup Revolution Conceal and Hydrate. And I mixed it together on my little palette. I think I even added some white to it, but I really, I'm like, this is how much white I have left. <laughs> Obviously you can tell which color I would use the most, but I can still get a little bit out of it. See, I just kind of squirted a little tiny dot of white just to lighten it up a little bit. I love experimenting with makeup and just kind of like formulating my own little concoctions and seeing if it works, seeing if it doesn't work. And yesterday I tried this out and I felt like it worked really well. So I decided I was gonna show you guys because I know you care so much. So that's what it looks like. It's kind of like, you know, a lighter beige with a little yellow undertone. And I use this as like a little color corrector. I'm just gonna use the little spatula to apply it and kind of try to get rid of those purpley-ish circles that I have underneath my eyes. I don't have really dark eye circles, but it's something that I like to, you know, kind of conceal, make me look more awake, make my face look a little bit more bright and so there we go, super cute, I know. I'm gonna let that dry down, and while it's drying down, I'm going to do some contour, because I saw Harouche do this in one of her most recent videos. She applied all the concealer, contour, everything underneath her foundation, and I've been doing that whenever I do my makeup recently, and I feel like it works so much 
better than when I do my foundation first and then I do everything else on top. I feel like it just kind of blends easier, it blends better, everything sticks and stays for the entire day. And for my contour, I'm using the F18 Revolution Foundation Stick. And I got this little contour brush at the dollar store the other day. I kind of just like took a gander in the makeup section at the dollar store. I was like, I'm not gonna go too crazy. I just kind of want to see what they got. And I can't, I actually purchased quite a few brushes. This one's sassy and chic and it's a little contour brush and it's pretty decent. I like to use it just, you know, for like a cheek contour. And then sometimes I use it for nose contour as well. I can just get more precise lines with it. And the brush, the bristles are nice and smooth. And I've been really focusing on trying to make my nose contour a little bit cleaner recently because I know that the lines that you do really affect the end product. So I'm gonna bring that up into my eyebrow. There we go. We're gonna chop that tip and also those nostrils. So I kind of look like a little deer. Cute, right? And should we do a little button look? Mm, maybe slightly, just like right there. Ah, uh, I kind of fucked that up a little bit. Whatevs. So, oh, and ch jaw. I don't really need much help on the jaw contour, but I just feel like it makes everything kind of look a little bit more seamless. And we're gonna chisel that a little bit more. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, is that working? My cheekbones have never been the same shapes. This one is more round, this one's more angular. So that's a little struggle that I've been dealing with for my makeup career days. So I'm gonna take this, I got this brush at the dollar store as well. It's a little wet and wild. I think it's called just like a, a shadow smudger brush. It's really tiny. And and I'm gonna go and blend this down. Creating that shadow like a little bit more intense. Now, one might say this contour shade is a little deep for me. Honestly, I prefer a contour to be a little bit deeper so I can always lighten it up with my foundation because I really like those, those dark, you know, contour, that really chiseled look. If I use something a little bit lighter, I wouldn't get as much of a dramatic look out of it. So keep in mind that this is meant to be drama. Dramatic, dramatica. Survey says Drama. Harush also said that you can contour your nostrils. I didn't even think about that, but I kind of love that idea. I actually didn't do this the other day, so we're gonna see how this works out for me. Now I'm thinking my nostrils might be different shapes. I don't know, we'll see. Okay. Hopefully my battery doesn't die. I forgot to charge it before filming this video and that's just the worst when you're trying to film and you don't got enough juice in the battery. So next, I'm actually gonna go back in with my little concealer mixture and I'm going to put that down the bridge of my nose. Might be better to use a brush for this so you can get more of a precise, clean application. But I just grabbed what was in front of me. And then she also said to highlight the nostrils here. Now, I'm not following. If you go watch Harusha's video, you'll see she did three different nose contour applications. So don't judge me. Nice, very nice. How much? Nice. Okay, now, what should I do? Let's go, let's do a little Cupid's bow moment and then some on the chin. I'm actually gonna highlight my smile lines because you wanna bring forward anything that is like deep set, you know? My smile lines aren't too bad, but I want to bring them forward. Meow, I look like a little kitty now. <laughs> Am I a cat? My little kitty cat. I'm going to spray my sponge with some setting spray and we're gonna blend. Just tap tapping all of that 
goodness in. Of course, I know I look yellow. Don't come for me. Trust the process, guys. It always works out in the end because of course I'm gonna put foundation on so we can make everything look nice and seamless with the foundation application. I've just been so into complexion makeup lately. Not so much eyes. Yeah, I look so yellow right now. Don't worry about it. It's not your face. We're just brightening those under eyes, remember? And I've used the same concoction for everything. But like I said, don't come for me. I do what I want. Whatever, I do what I want. Whatever, I do what I want. Another thing I saw her do was she applies cream blush underneath everything, which I think is a really cool technique. I did it the other day with my Anna Sui, the black uh, cream blush that I have. And I really loved how it kind of, it shows through the the foundation from underneath and it just makes you look a little bit more radiant from the inside out so I'm doing some cream blush underneath and I'm, of course it looks like I have a, a massive amount on right now but once I go over with my foundation it's gonna cover that up and make it look nice and seamless and blended and I wish I had like a liquid highlight or like, I don't know if they make cream highlighters. I'm sure they do. I wish I had one of those so I could kind of give myself a highlight from underneath and get a lit from within kind of glow. I do have this, the NYX Bear With Me primer, which is a little bit, it's like shiny, but I just don't like how it really makes my face look super shiny. And then I put my foundation on and I'm still like really shiny. And so then I have to matte it down and it just kind of looks weird. Especially Especially for winter time you don't want to be like super dewy and glowy during the winter because that's not <laughs> My camera battery died and I put it on the charger because I'm an idiot and I didn't have an extra battery handy. But I called my mom and I talked to her on the phone for like an hour and then Dylan got home and he brought Arby's. So it's been about two hours since I first started and I've been walking around the house with this makeup on my face and Dylan came home and he was like, what look are you going for? I said it's called contour. Anyways, I believe I stopped off at the liquid highlighter phase and I said I wish I had one, but I don't have one. But I have all of this on right now and I'm just going through and tapping that in. I honestly don't know how this is gonna work because it's been sitting on my face and I haven't touched it. So I might have to either re-wet my beauty blender or my beauty sponge, sorry. Or we'll hopefully when, uh, when I go over with foundation, it'll kind of blend a little bit easier. So this is a, a little, it's a learning experience for all of us. Yeah, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use this sponge. It's still a little bit damp from when I, from when I cleaned my, my brushes and stuff. I'm trying to make it more of a habit of cleaning everything before I use it because it can be, you know, it's kind of a chore sometimes to be like, ugh, I used it once. Why do I have to clean all my brushes now? But you know, it's better for your skin. It's better for the makeup. You get more like true to tone color payout when you actually clean your stuff. So that's pretty decent, pretty, pretty good blend. Now I'm gonna go in with my Revolution Conceal and Hydrate Foundation. And this is F3. I've been gravitating towards F3 a lot more lately, just because I usually, when I purchase foundation, I do go a shade lighter in general, but I feel like that one, the F1 that I had, oh my gosh, it's just so light and it's kind of stark. So sorry if the lighting changed from from the beginning portion of this video also because the light has moved since I was filming but it was good talking to my mom I talk to my mom pretty much you know two three times a week sometimes and it's always good to talk to her I talk to her for like um, probably an hour at the least every single time and you know we just shoot the shit we see what's going on kind of connect with each other and i think that's really important you know a lot of people i know some people when they they're fully grown up and they don't talk to their family members at all and i think it's really important to to stay in contact with your family because your family are the ones that know 
know you best and they've known you since you were a little wee one and you gotta remember where you came from and that's what my mom and I were kind of talking about on the phone is we have some family members that have you know gotten into YouTube and had have had major success with YouTube and I applaud them for that because this is not an easy thing to do and you have to be really consistent and really dedicated to it if you want to succeed and I am very proud to call them my family members but in return I don't think they show the same gratitude and it's just kind of upsetting because it's like we know who you are we know you from before all this and why are you acting like you know like you're like we're strangers now so I'm not gonna talk about it too much but that's just my opinions that's just how I feel and I'm definitely not gonna name names because I don't want any sort of you know public bashing of one side or the other we're all family and we can all exist and have success in our own ways and I think it's really important again to support that so and topic. I'm going in with another pump of my foundation and just gonna cover up that yellow area a little bit more. Yeah, I'm really, really bright now because of the lighting. It looks very nice, but you can't really tell my contour as much anymore. Let me see if I can adjust the camera a little bit better there so I'm not as washed out. You can kind of see where I'm going. You can still see the blush and the contour through the foundation, but you see how it has really toned down that insane contour it doesn't look as catty anymore I don't look so feline I mean I do have some still like outlying feline features but it's not as crazy stark as it was it doesn't look like you know Halloween face paint Now, when Harouche was doing this, she used pretty much brushes the entire time. I've been using a sponge just because I like I like it when they're a little bit damp, like this one I had cleaned prior to filming, so it was damp when I started using it. I like to use a setting spray to dampen it up because I feel like it helps kind of blend everything out evenly, but obviously you don't need to just use a sponge or a brush. You can use either one for, for this technique. See? Okay. Like, I like that kind of natural sheen. That's the finish of the foundation because it's the conceal and hydrate. So I'm obviously hydrating. I'm not mattifying. I did put on the matte primer, but like I said in my previous video, I can't really tell the difference between the matte and the poreless putty primer. I like them both. I tend to gravitate more towards the poreless, but because I'm running low on that, I'm trying to use up what I have and use the, uh, the matte pr primer as well. So I'm really proud of this. I'm proud of how this is turning out. It looks really nice. Huh, natural, cute. Natural wasn't my intention going into this video. I kind of wanted to do something a little bit more dramatic. So I think I'm gonna go there with the eye look and I'm going to start by using the e.l.f. Putty Eye Primer and this is the ochre shade. It is a little dry. When I bought it, it was like this. I don't know if you can see how kind of around the edge the product is starting to peel off the pot and to me that signifies that it is dry and it's even cracking a little bit. So I don't know if that is how it's supposed to be or if I just got one at Ulta that was, you know, kind of defective. But yeah, well, I mean, the white one that I have is also, it's not peeling away or dry, but when I put my finger into it, it feels a little bit more chalky. So I'm just gonna use what I have on my finger of the cream color and hope that my skin will warm it up and it'll, see it's so chunky, oh my gosh. I don't know if I should be using this. Ugh, oh my gosh, do you see that? It's literally chunking up, ugh, what the? Okay, that's really frustrating. <gasps> oh no, now it's patchy. And I was doing so well with the foundation. No. Okay, I'm gonna try something. Let's see if some setting spray will save it. When I when I spray this in there, it kind of balls up. So it looks like it's all oily. Rubbing it in, it's really, it's not the water. It, the setting spray is just separating. Like it's not even, I don't think, rubbing in. My finger does feel a little damp. Let's see if it'll, um, I guess that works. It's not as, ugh, it still is patchy, but it's not as patchy as it was. Can you even tell? Do you guys see that? How? 
Okay, whatever. We're just gonna have to make do. I'll have to get another eye primer because this is just embarrassing. Oh, yeah, it's so dry and cracked. Like, that's so annoying. What a waste. Oh man. I mean, at least it's just the primer, but still, I just don't think that's how it's supposed to be performing, especially because the the face primers are so malleable and like creamy that that just doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me that it's so thick and dry. Oh man. Whatever, like I said, we're gonna make it do, make it work. Okay, should we do like, I was thinking about doing kind of like a Christmassy look today. Don't know how I'm gonna do that. We're gonna use the Pure Raw Beauty Christie, and we're gonna use the Colorful side today. Yes, can't you tell I'm so excited? I'm kind of scared, that's why I'm, I'm like acting weird. We're gonna start with my little IT Cosmetics. This is the Precision Shadow number 112. We're gonna start with white. I, I always like to start with a light base and just kind of do something all over the lid first because otherwise I really get I get nervous and I'm afraid to just go in with the color right at the very beginning. We're doing that from the inner corner to the brow and the entire lid. Does this have a scent to it? I don't think I realized that before. I feel like it does. It almost has like a vanilla-y smell. So I've never done this before, but I'm keeping that line from my nose to my brow because I contoured that. When I contoured, I did that. So I'm gonna keep that free of shadow and I'll probably go in a little bit later and deepen that up a little bit more. But for right now, I'm keeping it clear because I wanna remember to like contour that. Oh, ooh, this is looking muddy on this side. Ugh, that stupid primer, I'm so upset. Cute. Okay. Now let's go with Garden State, or should we go Hurtful Garden State and then Flavor Town, or would that be too many colors? I think I'm just gonna do the two, the Garden State and then Flavor Town, just so we can keep it very red and green, very Christmassy. So Garden State, outer corner. We're gonna tap at an angle on the outer corner, going up, and then we are going to easily, slowly blend towards the center, following the shape of my brow bone. And coming in basically to that spot that I left shadowless. And now I'm going to slowly blend upwards towards the eyebrow. Just like so. Now, if you are afraid of color, afraid of like colorful eye looks, I totally relate. I'm very much in the same boat. I am definitely afraid of color when it comes to eyeshadow. When it comes to lips or cheeks or stuff like that, I'm generally a little bit more like lenient and like kind of free. But when it comes to colorful eyeshadow, I always get so scared because I don't want to look like Mimi from the Drew Carey show. <laughs> That's always been my biggest fear, but I've learned that you can do it in a nice, pretty, tasteful way, and you don't have to be afraid of color. So, I'm holding my breath right now, too, guys. I'm nervous. This is scary. <laughs> I already look like Mimi, but it'll come together. It always does. So, I'm going to blend out this line up here, just kind of soften that edge so it's not as harsh, and make more of like a pointy corner, like that. And I've learned holding your brush a little bit lower rather than holding it like way up here and trying to do it. It's a lot easier when you hold it towards the, the end a little bit more so you can get more of like a flow so you're not like as tense. That's actually not bad. Now I'm gonna go in with, okay, so I got this Wet n Wild brush. It's just like a regular round tip brush and I'm gonna go in with Flavor Town and we're gonna go on the remainder of the lid, I'm not gonna touch the inner corner though. So this is actually working really well because this brush is still kind of wet when I washed it. So I can be a little bit more precise with this red. I'm 
Okay, kind of see where this is going. I'm gonna switch brushes because it's a little too damp for me. Let's see if I can find one. I'll try and use this little round brush right here just so I don't have such a harsh line where the two pigments meet. I kind of want it to be a little bit more blown out. So that is actually really nice. Do you see where the two colors kind of blend together? I was worried that that would be muddy because generally in color theory, red and green make brown, but I'm seeing a little bit more of a bluish purplish hue and that could probably be because there's more blue in this green than yellow. And so I am getting more of a like deeper kind of purple, which is really surprising and I like that. Cute. I'm going to go on that brow line again just because I do have such a hooded eyelid. I like for my shadow on my brow line to be really prominent so that you can tell that I have an eye socket. I'm going to take that underneath my eye just a smidge as well. How do we feel? Cute. Merry Christmas, ho ho ho. So I am going in with my that green on the eyebrow hole, just just a tad. So it's not such as like stark contrast, you know, like that shadow ends right there. So I'm just kind of buffing it in a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna take that damp brush again and do the other side. Oof, I'm getting messy. I'm getting messy here. Come on, get it together, Kels. We're doing better. We're doing better now. And now I'm gonna take that round brush again and just go over and blend. Might have gone too far in the inner corner there, but that's okay. buffing things out nicely. Maybe I will do a touch of red on the inner corner. That kind of looks pretty. And then back in with Garden State, just really defining. And then again, bringing that into the eyebrow hole a touch. How do you feel? It's all right, right? Probably could do better, but I'm being brave and I'm going out on a ledge here. So don't judge me unless you can do it better. And then please give me all the critiques. Oh, my nose itches. Okay, that looks really pretty though. Okay, I'm gonna do some of this cafe dip. Don't know when that stopped recording. That is really annoying. Hope you guys saw most of that transformation. <laughs> Just again, going over with Cafe Disco, which is the glittery topper tone, looking very festive. I almost, it's almost like mermaidy. I'm very surprised because in the pan, this looks like a really like true to red. And this is, is it is more of a teal green, but it's like pretty green. And then when I put Flavor Town on, it kind of came out more of a, like a pinky red. That could have been just either the white 
white underneath or my primer. That's really pretty. Okay, we're doing festive Christmas mermaid today. I'm going to take my tiny little concealer brush and I'm gonna do some of Cafe Disco on the lower lash line. I never do this, but I think it'll be nice a nice way to tie everything in. Cute. Okay, brows. I'm gonna go in with this little, just a, f a normal flat brush that I use for face painting sometimes. The ferrule that has fallen off multiple times, but I just keep trying to bend it back on. I've been using my Revolution Brow Palette, but I've been using a different shade recently. Normally I go in with this lighter brown, it's like a pomade, but yesterday I did it with this darker brown and I feel like it worked a lot better because the lighter brown has more of a reddish undertone and my eyebrows don't have any red in them. My hair does kind of get a little bit red only in like the sunlight, but my eyebrows are not red at all. So anyways, I actually am going to first use this e.l.f. eyebrow wax. I got this at the dollar store. I was really surprised to see like the products that they had there and it's, it's the dollar tree it's not like a 99 cent store or anything it's the dollar tree and i was really surprised at the amount of elf products that they have there and i really like elf so that was cool i felt like most of them were products that probably weren't big sellers or big hits like this the brow wax I think this would be good if you're like gluing your eyebrows down or you know like covering them up with foundation and stuff because it is really waxy like when I move my eyebrows I can feel it the other day I opened the oven and I felt the wax on my eyebrows melt as like the oven heat came out so I'm just gonna go through and comb that wax in with a nice little spoolie and kind of try to tame those hairs to go in the direction that I want them to go. But they do like stick down. Like if I wanted to, I could really like glue my eyebrows down with this wax. Maybe I'll try that one day, see see if that'll work. I've actually never done a look where I didn't have eyebrows. I've done a look where I bleached my brows. I'll actually put that right here. It's one of my favorite photo shoots that I've done. Miley Bello was the makeup artist. You can find her at Miley Bello MUA. And that that was actually one of my favorite makeup looks that I've ever had. She just made, she just completely transformed my face and I thought that was so amazing that you could make somebody look completely different with just makeup. So thank you Miley, I loved that. Now I am going to go in, like I said, with my little Revolution brow palette. Let's talk about Revolution for a minute. A lot of people don't like Makeup Revolution because it's like a dupe brand and they like steal ideas from people and whatnot, which I do not agree with. I'm very much, if you've watched my videos before, I'm very much like a give credit where credit is due type person. I don't like it when people steal ideas and try to make them their own. I mean, you can obviously be inspired by somebody and you can say, hey, this was my inspiration for this look or this was my inspiration for this product, but to straight up copy somebody and literally jack their idea and not even give any credit is really disheartening and I understand why people don't want to use Revolution because of that, but when I first started, you know, purchasing makeup at like Ulta, I went in there and I only I had a $50 gift card from my fiance's mom and I had never been into an Ulta before. I'd been in Sephora multiple times, but I was like, this makeup is just too expensive. I can't justify spending this much money on makeup. So when I went into Ulta with $50 and I was like, I have to make the most of this, I sat in there for I think like two hours swatching makeup and comparing the quality of products to the price. And for me, Makeup Revolution was the one that had the best 
quality for the most affordable price and I could get a, tr a powder, a foundation, a concealer, and everything for less than $50, you know? And I think that's really important when it comes to a makeup brand or a drugstore quality makeup brand. You need to be able to find something that is of quality, but they're not sacrificing anything for the price. That's why I like e.l.f. so much and why I'm so upset because my putty primer is dried out, you know? I mean, it might be my fault. Maybe I didn't put... No, it wasn't my fault. I remember when I got it, it was like that. So that's just really upsetting. It probably wasn't selling as well as they thought it would and they just dried out before they could be, you know, sling, slang, slunged. But yeah, you see what I mean with this brow product? I like it a lot better than the other color that I was using. And I've been trying to be more precise with those brow hairs. I think the wax really does help because it trains the hairs to go in the direction that you want to from, you know, to begin with. And then you can kind of go through and fill in those bald spots and make your brows look nice and full. My problem when doing my eyebrows is I always forget to elongate the tail or I'll do it on this side and then I won't do it on this side and so it'll look like I have a nice big full brow and then you turn and I have like a tiny little brow on this side. Decent. Sisters, not twins. Now I'm going to do some powder. Lately I have been making my own little powder concoction because I really like the Juvia's Place White Sands powder that I got, but I feel like sometimes it can react in weird ways with my concealer or with my foundation. So I've been mixing it because I really like the color of it. I've been mixing it a little bit with my translucent powder, my Makeup Revolution translucent powder, and I feel like this might be a new go-to for me because the translucent the translucent is nice don't get me wrong but I used it the other day and I was like oh it just doesn't perform the way that it used to or the way that I thought it used to so I decided to just give it a go I love mixing things I love making little concoctions that's why I love to paint so much because I love mixing colors and I you know I've been to art school Actually, I've been to, okay, so wanna hear my college journey? I never graduated, but I've gone to three different colleges. Right out of high school, I played softball at a small community college in Washington, and at there, I took art history, and I loved that class. My teacher was so good. I learned so much. She literally went from, you know, the beginning ages of like ancient Egyptians to the ancient Greeks to the ancient Romans. And then, you know, we went to Europe. We went to, I mean, we didn't go there physically, but we learned about it. We learned about France, Germany, like all these different countries. And I just think it is so cool how art progresses with history and how the art reflects the history of the time. And I think that's so cool. I just love learning about, you know, that kind of stuff. So when I eventually transferred to a community college a little bit closer to home, I remember I just, all I, all, the only classes I wanted to take were art classes. And of course they were all full. So I got stuck with a graphic design class. But in that class, I'm not sure if I've talked about this before. In that class, we didn't use computers at all we learned how to do graphic design by hand which is how they did it like in the olden days <laughs> in like the 50s the golden age of marketing and it was just the coolest thing to learn how to do all that stuff by hand and really come up with those concepts by hand and it inspired me and I was like I want to go to the Art Institute so that's why I moved here to Vegas is I went to the Art Institute of Las Vegas and didn't graduate wish I did but 
but it was too expensive. I couldn't get any more loans. Not even Sally Mae would give me a loan. I was just, I was caught in between a rock and a hard place because I wanted to go to school, but I couldn't afford it. And I couldn't work a job because I had to go to school. So it was like, do I work full time or do I go to full school full time? Or do I do part time, part time? Eventually I found showgirling and I just decided to take on showgirling full time. And I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll be able to finish school one day. I know I will. Still haven't, which is really upsetting, but it's okay. I've learned, especially in today's day and age, schooling isn't much of a necessity as your skills. Your skills are more of a necessity than your degree. And, you know, I've had lots of graphic design jobs and I've had you know, painting jobs, face painting jobs. I've, I've really kind of explored a lot here in Vegas and I'm really thankful and proud of that. But yeah, I don't know where I was going with this, but that's why I like to mix colors. <laughs> that was the entire thing, <laughs> whatever. <sighs> this is a, a cup that my mom made. It says adventure awaits. This is an original painting by my mom. And she, she is a watercolor artist. So she painted this and then she got it put on mugs and then she actually digitally put on Adventure Awaits. And then on this side, it says cherish each, cherish each day. So this is one of my favorite mugs. We're gonna go in with some bronzer now. Let's do Frida Kahlo since we're talking about artists. I've always loved art. I've always loved painting. And I'm really happy that I found a place where I can kind of do both on YouTube because at first I thought like, oh, I have to just stick to painting videos and you know, I have to be just like everybody else. And I've learned that like, no, actually I don't need to be like everybody else. I can be me. Who cares if people don't like me? They're not gonna watch like better for me. I don't want people hate watching my videos, you know? So even if I'm, it means that I'm gonna grow slower or be smaller for longer, you know, I've learned a lot of power lies in being a smaller creator because I can make more mistakes. I can, you know, be a little bit louder than somebody who has a larger following because they have to, you know, they worry about their image and they worry about what their fans are gonna say. And you know, it's one of those things where it's just like, I would prefer people just know me for who I am right now and not feel like I have to hide myself from you guys, from my viewers. Like why would I wanna hide who I really am from the people who want to see me be myself? It just doesn't make sense to me. So yeah, anyways. Cute. I don't know if you can, you can still see that blush coming through my foundation, which is so cool. I just love that. I don't feel like I really need to put on any blush right now. I am, however, going to buff out that bronzer that I just put on my nose. That was kind of intense. The thing about my nose is I have a really skinny bridge and then it kind of triangles out from there. So a lot of my contour gets stuck like right here. Okay, super annoyed because my camera battery died again, but I had an extra one charging on the little stand, so I was thinking ahead in that situation. The bridge of my nose is really skinny, so I have problems contouring. That's the end of the story. <laughs> okay, now that all that is on, I don't think I'm gonna do blush. Should I do blush? Maybe I might do like a little bit just a touch. We'll do the Wet n Wild color icon, fantastic plastic pink. We'll just give it a little a zhuzh, and maybe even come onto the bridge and do a little Rudolph moment here because we're super Christmassy. Cute, nice, love it, awesome. So we're gonna spritz. Now I'm gonna go in with highlight. Instead of using my trusty dusty Ofra, I'm gonna use the Ombre Radiance blush that my mom got me for my birthday. And I'm just gonna dip, I'm just dipping into the gold part at the very top. And we're going to, I'm gonna do one line underneath the shadow right there, just like that. And then I'm going to bring it down onto the cheek so that we have a majority of the highlight, like boom. And then it kind of diffuses onto the cheekbone. Cute. 
cute. Now, I saw Harouche do this where she takes her highlight on her finger and she does it just on like a slight bit of the bridge and then does a little boom right there. Nice. I'm also going to highlight Cupid's bow. Another thing, Harouche is like my favorite YouTuber. She literally gives the best tricks and the best tutorials. So if you're interested in watching tutorials or just learning how to like do your makeup a little bit better from a professional makeup artist who has literally worked on all of the biggest celebrities, she's such a wealth of information and she's so nice. She always likes my comments and I just feel like we have this little connection and she's like, you know, one of my friends. She always contours her lips with contour before, you know, before the foundation and everything. I've never done that and I wish I would have done that this time, but I totally forgot. So I'm just going to go in with a normal lip pencil and over, like, overline slightly. One thing that I really don't like to do when I'm overlining my lips is I don't like to fill in my cupid's bow. I just have a really prominent, very pointy lip. And when I fill that in, I feel like it almost looks like I have a mustache. <laughs> So that is not something I like to do. I know that there are a lot of other girls out there where it looks amazing on them, but it just does not work for my lip shape, or at least I feel like it doesn't work. Maybe if somebody else did it, they could show me how to, you know, fill it in and make it look good. So I try to emphasize that as much as I can. Now I filled that in on the inner corners and we're gonna do that same on the top lip. And then I saw Harouche do this where she does the line down the center. Okay, and I found this lip gloss the other day. Oh my gosh, I don't even know what it's called. I know I got it in a Nipsey bag, but the the label has worn off, so I really don't know what the brand is. Sorry guys, but I'm just kind of dabbing that on. This gloss is, it's like a clear gloss, but it also has like a red, a red tint. Do you see that? It has kind of like an orangey, orangey red kind of sparkle. I think that's really pretty. So I just did that on like the center of the lip and then rub that together. Now we're gonna do mascara. How do we feel? I don't think I'm gonna do lashes. I think it looks pretty the way it is. Awesome! Is that a good montage? Vogue. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm so happy you decided to take some time to watch this video. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you were entertained in some way. And I love you and I will catch you on the flip side. Peace out. Okay. Okay. Intro. Bum. Hello. <laughs> okay. Educate yourself, damn it. No, I'm just kidding. <sighs> hey.
Hey. Farting on your videos? That wasn't me. Rudy Giuliani in here. Oh, stop. Topper tone, topper shade, whatever. Cute. So, anyways. What bronzer do I want to use? Should take my hair down for that and just whip it around. 